turned to me and he said, my whole life I was pointing them to Muhammad. And, and, and I tell this to people sometimes, that, and, and you know better than I know, that our Imam knew how to speak to people. He didn't need to always quote everything in Arabic and the Hadith, but I tell brothers all the time, all y'all that were kicking Sunnah, that word, Ahl Sunnah with Jama'ah, you, squ- you scared more people away from the Sunnah of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam than any COINTEL program could have, than any uh, anti-Muslim program could have, because you had turned what is absolutely beautiful into a scary, overwhelming monster that even yourself could not bear. You could not bear your own rhetoric after a couple of years. And that's why, brothers, you know, after a while, man, look, and I, I have to be honest, if, it were, if, if all I ever heard was Islam was from Muslims like you are, I don't know if I could be Muslim. But it was then, but it was Imam Muhammad, may Allah have mercy on him, who rarely even had to even use the word, yeah. right? Yeah. Who sometimes would be castigated by others by not using yeah. enough Arabic. Yeah. Who was doing more to champion yeah. the beloved sunnah of our Prophet, yeah. than any other American Muslim in human yeah. history. Yeah. Hey, and I'm not just saying that because I'm in this room. That's a sociological historical fact. That's not an opinion. That's a historical fact. And I say this, and I'll say this at the University of Chicago, I'll say it in any academic setting, it's a historical fact. There's no other human being, there's no other American Muslim that precipitated the largest mass migration to Islam than our beloved Imam Mohdi Muhammad. May Allah have mercy on him. And, and we should all own that reality. That is all our Muslim history. And there is no Imam Muhammad Muhammad without the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Yeah. And, then, and so all of that is our history. Right. We need to embrace it. We need to celebrate it and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for bringing us the individuals, who, all of you all, who championed it with your lives. See, you taught us something that I, I want my children to always learn. That there is something worth living and dying for. Living and dying for. And unless we continue to champion that, we will be victim and vulnerable to everyone else's program. Unless we live up, uh, lift up a program that we believe in, that it's worth living and dying for. And so, as this generation and these pioneers, as we continue to come together and celebrate the extraordinary impact that all of the imams have made, that all of the pioneers, all of y'all have made, I want you to know that we genuinely have nothing but extraordinary love and respect, and I'm gonna continue to make it my life mission to make sure that as we continue to fight for a better world, for a better city, for a better Chicago, for a better America, and a better globe, that the world continues to know who, because this is not, this is the, this is the lesson from our uh, beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. La nas, la yushkur Allah. Those who are not grateful for the people are not grateful to God. That's, that's a lesson from our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it's, a, and it's a sunnah of Allah. Be grateful for what Allah has given us. Yeah. And, if, and, and one of the most terrible sins is ingratitude. Yeah. And one of the most terrible sins is ingratitude. And, and, how, and how completely by, and, and, and you know, completely out of line would we be if we continue to be ungrateful for the history that bore us? One of the most, one of the primary lessons, respect the womb that bore you. Right? Respect the womb that bore you. And this, in this room, this is the womb that bore Islam in America. And, and we should always, we should always lift that up. Whether it's Muslims from the subcontinent, whether it's Palestinian Muslims, Muslims, they should understand and respect that womb. And we should give honor to that womb. And we should be grateful that Allah allowed us to all come out of that womb. And so may Allah always allow you and your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren to take pride in that extraordinary effort that you all made possible and that you continue to make possible by your presence, by your energy, and know that there are no organizations like Iman in America. There are no people like me in America without all the effort of people in this world. And I know the womb that bore me, 
And I'm here because I love you, and I'm here because I'm your son, I'm your grandson, and I'm part of this community in my heart and my soul, and I beg that Allah continue to allow each and every one of you to be a recipient of divine mercy and light, and allow us all to be brought together in the highest gardens of Jannah with our beloved Imam, and with those who have come before us, our great, our ancient and pious predecessors, and allow Allah to be, allow us to be worthy of that light that he put into the Prophet um, um, and he put into those who follow him and allow us to continue to remember that dua, the dua that our beloved Prophet used to make in the middle of the night, he used to get up in the middle of the night at the, uh, at the uh, height of the night and make a dua the one of the most beautiful duas, right? And some of us know, Allahumma ja'al fi qalbi nura. Oh Allah, put, in your, put your light in my heart. Wa an yameeni nura. Wa on my right, your light. An yasari nura. And on my left, your light. Rafoki nura. And above me, light. And tahti nura. And below me, light. Wa abani nura. And in front of me, light. Wa khalfi nura. And behind me, your light. And then how would he end it? Allahumma ja'alni nura. Oh Allah, make me your light. So we beg that Allah continue to make each and every one of us and allow us to be the light that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in our Prophet put it to those who follow him because it's this light and it's your light that has lit the way for so many thousands, countless others, many that you don't even know. The light that this community lit is the light that led Muslims into judgeships, into mayorships, into most active prominent positions across America. Long before it was popular to talk about that. Long before it was popular to say, you go across America, some of the most successful American Muslims that we know of have are people who got their light from this community, got their life from the passion and love of this community. So we honor this, we honor the, the family of our beloved Imam Murti Muhammad, may Allah continue to bring them together, bring our hearts together, yeah. and let us be the community that drops all beef, yeah. please. Well, beloved brothers, says, let's drop the beef. Let's love, let's love one another. Let's forgive one another. Let's forgive one another and bring people together and understand that that's part of the prophetic tradition. Islam made it nice. He brought the hearts of people together and he, and he, and he brought the owls and the husbands together. He was able to bring their hearts only for the sake of God, for the sake of the love of God, so that they can continue to be the community that illuminates the light for thousands and thousands and millions upon millions of people from that day to this day and allow Allah to, may Allah allow us to continue to be among them. Jazakallah khair for your time and for allowing me to be here and uh, be among you. Assalamu alaikum. Wow. 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 is no greater than the people who support it. Tax bill. You do not know how to quit. And I want to say this to you. 
we've had some things in the Nation of Islam that I would like to share <coughs> that some of us may not have known. You know, we were told to do for self. Right. And we were given the, the sacred book, the Quran. I was in the Nation of Islam. And we were told to take that book and put it on the shelf. That's right. <laughs> And we were told that Harik Muhammad told Elijah Muhammad, don't worry about teaching them Arabic, that your children will teach them Arabic. I remember that teaching. Well, I used to open up that Quran in the nation of Islam. And I guess that's why I was able to, to follow Imam W. D. Muhammad so easily. <laughs> the do for self, most of us, we didn't understand. And if you're taking notes, I'd like you to have this. I have Cosm here. He may be able to give me something in case I get the wrong reference. In the fifth chapter of the Quran, I think it's verse 105. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu alaykum anfusakum. O you who believe, your own souls obligate you. That is your Quran. That is the Arabic for do for self. Do you hear what I just told you? Yeah. There are most people who question Abu Muhammad. He wasn't in the Sunnah, this, that, the other thing. He used the English, do for self. But he was he was in the spirit of the Quran. Yeah, you had to be. Alaykum and All you who believe, your own self obligate you. Next thing I'd like to give you, I was in the nation, I remember. I remember talking with the pioneers. Do y'all remember Captain Ali? You see old man Ali, Captain? He would tell us, he say, he would talk to me in college and say, boy, he would tell us, you young boy. Kareem Ali, y'all remember Kareem Ali? I mean, Kareem Ali. Kareem Ali. Kareem Ali. Kareem Ali. Kareem Ali. Kareem Ali. <laughs> he would say, we were told to say, ice salam Ice, I-C-E. We weren't told, as salam Okay? Again, great wisdom. It took Imam W.D. Muhammad to explain the wisdom of what was even in the language. Ice, you know, if you have water or meat or something like that, you want to preserve it, you put it in the freezer. And you freeze it for a later time. So we were given a language in the nation of Islam that froze our assets until a time would come with one Imam W.D. Muhammad that would thaw out the historic language so that we could grasp it. <clears throat> Said that the mother plane would come down after 40 years. And many of us would look out like this here, looking for the mother plane. I know I did. And Imam Muhammad, he told us, he said, the mother plane that was to come down after 40 years was his leadership that would bring down plain understanding in the language that we have. Why is this? We're giving this, we want to know why we're giving respect. It's because your physical body had to have the stomach of your mother. In medicine, we say uterus. But it's, you know, for us, common language, stomach, right? <coughs> in order to produce a body, a body has to have an environment. The environment for that beautiful body that you have, that perfect body, that handsome face you got, brother, those broad shoulders you have, sisters, those curves that you have, if I don't use my discipline, I'll curve right off the road. Okay? Yeah. That, that's a little good humor. Tell us that we should get married. We should respect marriage. That's what I'm speaking to certain people. They're recording it. The womb for the for the body is the uterus, but the womb for your mind is language. Are you listening? Yeah. This is why the Quran is so important, because the human being is created in a language environment more than he's created in the uterus or the stomach environment. I hope I'm making this a little plain. It says, Ikra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaqa. I'm not trying to show off no every, I'm doing it for a reason. Ikra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaqa, khalaqa l'insana min ala. Why am I speaking like this? When I came in the nation of Islam, I could not speak Arabic. I couldn't read Arabic. 
So I'm doing this because I am a living miracle. I'm not showing off myself. I'm showing off the power of power. You understand? Power in the same way. You heard that baby recite, that little baby? Tears growing from my eyes. Heck yeah. This is what we wanted. We struggled for these things. Now, let me say this to you. You know the sisters, how you dress? I don't know if there's any Christians here, but I want to say this to the good Christians that we have. You know the white reason why women, one of the reasons why they dress the way they dress? It's because they love the mother of Christ Jesus. Our Muslim women. In our Quran, it said, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and raised over all of the women of the world. Am I telling the truth or not? That's what it said. So our women respect what the Quran says so much till our women would dress just like the mother of Jesus. You never saw Mary in a ministry. Nope. You've never seen that. I think. I think. So I'm saying this because I want to, in, in, to, 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 to establish some bonds a little, a little deeper than what we had before. <laughs> We, we have in our religion, it says, Read with the name of your Lord who created, and he created the human being from a clot. This is the first five verses of the Quran. When you read the Quran, like me, I thought that the first chapter of the Quran was the Fatiha. I didn't know. The first chapter of the Quran was chapter 96. And how many verses was it? Five. And when I came in the nation of Islam and I heard this story, I thought Prophet Muhammad was reading a book. You hear what I mean? Read with the name of your. So I'm thinking Prophet Muhammad, this man with this dress on, this is my imagination. He's reading a book like this. But he wasn't reading a book like that. Because Allah was telling Muhammad the Prophet that you, the human being, I create you twice. I create you first in your perfect orientation of your physical body. See this physical body? Nothing wrong with it. No sin in the flesh anywhere. And after I had fully created that physical body that you have most perfect, then I bring about the second creation, and that's the creation of your mind. That's why the first five verses are there, because it's letting you know that if all you have is a physical body, then all you have is a human being in a human image. But in order to have the real human, you can't get that human by eating steaks and potatoes. It is the Quran that tells you how you get the human. You get the human by his five senses. And look what Allah does. You grab things with your five fingers. You see, huh? You grab. You lift yourself up with your five toes. Am I right or wrong? So Allah has given us through Muhammad the Prophet these first five verses to let us know that you grasp reality and you evolve yourself by using your five senses. That fear. Listen, and why do you have to pray five times a day? It is because you are the only unique creation that is not finished. As long as you are alive, you are in this transitory womb. And our law never finishes with you. Touch me. I can't help it. I can't help it. That's why your hair falls out. That's why your skin comes off. You know when you kiss that pretty woman, your wife? Do you know you're kissing death? The outer layer of the skin is dead. But you love it. And there's people that are afraid of death, but you better stop kissing them. Now, I'm having a little humor because I'm trying to get to a certain serious point. <laughs> we could not come here without the aid of the, of the woman. That's why we have in the Quran the fourth chapter that's called An Nisa. And then Nisa means women, but it's close to an Arabic word, Nasaya, which means he forgot. And it means the problem in the world is because most men have forgotten the sacred and divine role of their mothers. Amen. That's why that verse is in the Quran. And how many tech beers do we have? Four. Allahu Akbar. 
Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And who makes man universal? It's the woman. Some of you, you know Arabic. You get in, as long as you have life, you study Arabic. Sisters, you don't know this, so I'm going to tell you this. <clears throat> Me, the man, what I give looks like this. Like this, little point. My life journey. You, you give something that looks like this. Almost circle. <clears throat> and it almost looks like the number five in Arabic. Woo! Good God. <laughs> oh, boy, I'm telling you. This is our dean. How many verses Prophet Muhammad would receive? Ah, and the life germ of this male has to meet with the egg of mama, right? Yes. And her egg is in the shape of what? The number five. And when you bury her, how many rats do you have to put her in? Five. Because she brings the life from the undeveloped form unto its complete shape. I don't give it eyes. I don't give it ears. I don't give it lungs. You sisters. And the world is not going to change until you change it. Lord, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but I have to talk serious. You take this down for your youngsters. You old like I am. You don't need it. You know, in Arabic, there's a T called this. Fair Matu. It means the open T. Then there's another T called K. Marbuta. It's closed like this. It's closed like this. Matu holds like this. Oh, another T is closed. You know what, and it's called femininity. You know what Allah is telling you? I'm talking about brothers. You know what he's telling the sisters? Sisters, if a man ain't gonna marry you, keep your legs right. crossed. <laughs> <laughs> Tie it up. You tell your daughters this. You tell your daughters this. I'm giving you the teeth. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad told us what? Respect your women. I'm giving it to you in another language form. All right? So you can appreciate that man more than maybe what what I did when I was alive with you. I got to watch that. <laughs> so listen, sister, if he if 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 if, if, if he gonna kiss you, you back up. <laughs> Who gonna pay the light bill? <laughs> <laughs> Who gonna buy the groceries? <laughs> you, you understand what I'm saying? Right. This is what we need to talk to our sons and our daughters. I told my boys, don't you ever touch a woman you're not gonna marry. Right. That's my role as a father. Right. You hear me? And I told my daughter, if a man put his hand on you, you leave him. And I told the one that's going to marry my daughter, if you feel you got to do that, you send him to me. Because I put my hand on him once or twice. <laughs> Didn't need to. I said, because my daughters, they're not, they're, not, they're not influenced from here. They influence from here. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Now, Nisa, listen. <clears throat> the women. It comes from the Arabic, and that's that. What does it mean? I have seen, I have 15 brothers and sisters, so I have seen this. My mother would dress tattered because she forgot what she wanted, because she wanted to take care of her 15 children. Nessa, yeah, I'll tell you what that verse in the Quran means, that Torah. <coughs> she would feed us, and she would be small, because she would eat lambs. That's the natural woman. Good God. Imam W.D. Muhammad told us, what does woman mean? Woman is not one word, it's two words. W-O plus M-A-N. She has man in her name, but she's also what? The womb of man. Okay? Yeah. <clears throat> but look, 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 sisters. It also speaks to you also in another term they call you what? Female. Take the fee off, and what do you have? Male. Male. And fee is just F-E. That's one E. In Arabic, it's fee. It's a long E, meaning that she is a male like me, but she has something inside that I don't have. Fetus male. And I can't come here without her. Lord. So now, here's this five. Why are we praying five times a day? I'm trying to make this so that, so that our ritualism, thank you, dear brother, may Allah reward you, that our ritualism will have more sense. Uh, he, he may not call himself any man. He's only man. Yeah. You're only man. Yeah. Allah has gifted yeah. you and guided you. He reminds me of us when we were young. <laughs> I'm talking about us in the room. <laughs> I was just talking to the cousin. So why do we pray five times a day? This, you see, you, you look at yourself, 
your ear, your eye, your nose, and all of these wonderful things. You evolve because of your five senses. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, you see this camera right here? Oh, excuse me, Tyler. You see this camera right here? In order for dust to stop forming on this counter, I must do what? Light it. The salat for Muslims has been given to us because the human mind is like a countertop. And ideas are constantly being projected into you consciously, but more important, subconsciously. And they're bypassing your conscious mind and sitting in the subconscious mind. So Allah guided Muhammad the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with our salat so that we would know that we have a way to wipe away the false influences that come upon our mind that we're not even aware of. Thank you. Can I born you? No. No. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be what people don't want. But you know, you might not know this. You see my hand like this? How I'm standing? I'm standing upright. Okay? But do you know your brain in your head doesn't stand up? Your brain in your head bends over like this. You know the position of prayer, Allahu Akbar? That's not the holiest position. Tiam here, not the holiest position. Ruku, not the holiest position. What is the holiest position? Sajda. Sajda. That's all that sajda. That's the baby in the womb that's in prayer 24 hours a day. That's who you are. And he it is Allah who made most excellent everything. You hear me? Yes. So in your mother's womb, such as I'm talking to you, you cannot produce a criminal. It's impossible. Woman can't do it. The baby can't even come here without a woman discharging water. Because she's sending a clean soul into this world. Tap beer! Oh, she can be a whore. She can be a murderer. But the life that she sends to the world has no sin. Right. Oh, you wrong. Am I wrong? Go to the nursery and see if they smoke and reapers in there. <laughs> You're not going to see that in there. Am I, am I wrong? You're not going to see that in there. It takes that baby a long time to learn how to lie. From us. Have you ever noticed yourself when you see a brand new baby on white clock? You see that little baby and you look at it. And what's the first thing you do? If you're a natural man and woman, you want to go to that child and pick it up. Yeah. Why do you want to go to that child and pick it up? Because Allah is showing you yeah. who you are originally. Yeah. Right. And we made the human being in the most excellent mode. Yeah. In mama's womb, yeah. the most excellent mode. Yeah. That's why Allah made you go to sleep at night. What you own and now my own so bad. And we made your sleep restful. You must go to sleep. Why must you go to sleep? Because you have to go back under the condition of the womb of your mother. Did you know that? This is Muhammad the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is his teaching. This is his insight. This is the Quran. Alhamdulillah. Yes, so that's why you go to sleep, brother. <coughs> oh, I lost my notes. I had big trouble. Well, okay, okay. He got it for me. <laughs> you know that little baby when it's first born? I had 10 children. I'm like, Kyle, we got a ton of kids. Oh. <laughs> I got 10, 33 grandchildren, four great grandchildren. Every single one of them come here, it looked like a raisin. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I tell y'all this, I tell them across the country, I, I go to the infirmary, I have my friends, we could go in and get them, look at this brand new baby I just got, and I go there and I say, hey y'all, that's mine. The nurse on the other side, no, you all going over here. <laughs> and I look at that orangutan, you understand? I said, no, oh, this one is mine. She said, no, oh, that is yours. <laughs> now, this is a true story. Every brother, he ain't going to tell you this, but this is the way we are. Okay, now, my wife, with every single one of them orangutans that she brought in the world, when they took that baby to her, you know what my wife did? She embraced it. You understand? Now, why would Allah give us a baby that looked like a reason? It's because Allah said, look, I, I gave him the brain. 
I gave him the lung, I gave him the kidney, I'm going to give you the little bitty job to straighten the life out for him. Give you some dignity, some honor, some respect. Allah. Allah. You know all this diversity that's in unity? It's hard for people to see. How? Well, wait, who, who, what's it, what is the best religion? Is, is, is Christianity the best religion? Is Islam the best religion? Is Judaism the best religion? I'm not going to argue this thing. It's diversity. I'm a male. She's a female. Some don't know what the hell they are. Some say I'm a, I'm a, I'm a female in a man's body. Another one say he, she's a man in a female's body. Would you like to know the answer to that? What's up, said though? We get that answer. <laughs> Minnachin Wahia. We created you from a single soul. This is your Quran. The Quran answers homosexuality. Most people just don't know how to go into it. Without respecting the book, you can't get the answer. In your Quran, Allah says He made us from one soul. So what is Allah? So what is God telling us? He's telling us that the soul is both male and female. Please listen. The physical body is male or female. But the soul inside is male and female. Now if you don't know this, then Satan will lie to you and tell him that he's a woman in a man's body, giving him the half truth of his total reality. And if he's not into this knowledge, then they will fool him with the urge of nature. I hope you understand what I'm trying to get clean. Nature's going to demand, isn't it? It's going to want to express itself from down here. And look, I'm going to tell you this to help a lot of you. How do we say it's to that? Stand in prayer? You understand what I'm trying to say? The expression of life to reproduce itself is down here. That's most people. But it don't stay there. It moves up, down, to here. I hope you follow what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And eventually it wants to reproduce itself where? Here. Sex in religion is never supposed to be down here. Sex is supposed to be up here to reproduce the inner person. Good God. <laughs> I know some of you don't believe me. Sister, if you don't get a man that's been reproduced here, you ain't going to have nothing but hot breath and bread. <laughs> and listen to me, sister. The minute you lose your Coca-Cola bottle shake, you done lost him. You, you, you understand what I'm trying to tell you now? Because the sex, listen, it has to evolve from here. From here, look, sister, to here. Now, most of you my age, this is not for you. This is for your daughters. This is for your granddaughters. This is for your nieces. You have to talk to them with this kind of knowledge. Oh. Sex has lost its social context. It has a social context. We're more than animals and sheep. The animal has instinct to protect it. The only time we're on the instinct is when we go to sleep. When we go to sleep, we are instinctively intelligent. <laughs> Look at me, I'm sleeping. Am I gonna smoke a cigarette? No. Uh, Am I gonna drink wine? No. Why? Because I am instinctively what? Intelligent. So I go to sleep what? Intelligent. I wake up what? Intelligent. It's what I do between the two states that made me the fool. <laughs> you understand that? Okay? Allah. Allah. So, did I have five minutes? You got five minutes. Look at <laughs> I'm not coming back here. <laughs> no, I'm just teaching myself. So the, 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 the diversity is the wheels for the unity. Thank you, man, Muhammad. Look at your Bible. There is, look, the average black person shouldn't be a racist. Because every race is in you. Right? If I don't brush my teeth, you see the Chinese man. If you right? <laughs> yep. If you cut me, you see the red man. I'm not. If, if it comes out humorous to you, that's one. That's good. As long as you get something out of it. Okay. You see here. You see the brother. You turn here. You see him.
See my sclera? You see? So every man is in every man. And sisters, don't worry about us who get egotistical macho men. I'm going to tell a lot of brothers that we don't know. Brothers, before we were men, we were all females. Hello? <laughs> so don't make a big deal about your muscles and your deep voice. That doesn't make a man. So, all right, let me, let me, let me finish here right quickly. Now, Allah knows I had something more serious. You know the answer to this so-called terrorism? terrorism? Education. Muhammad the prophet, he said, he said, the ink of the scholar weighs more than the blood of the mom. Okay? So in Al-Islam, we don't raise up a bum. In Al-Islam, we raise up the Quran. Amen. You know all those great scholars that died? In the time of Muhammad the prophet and Moses, he said, blood was on the ground. You could take me to Jerusalem. You could take me to Saudi Arabia, Mecca. I just was there. Just a three, four weeks ago, and we went to the sacred places and guess what? We couldn't find any of the blood. You hear me? Yeah. To identify what martyr was killed at this spot. Yeah. But you can pick up the ink of the Quran and it's still here. So I, I have to conclude that maybe, maybe, maybe the next time we, we could do a little bit better on time. I'm, I'm just rushing right now. <coughs> You'll begin you're going like Allah Akbar like this. See? And going like this. How you start your prayer. What is this saying? This is saying that I am first a spiritual creature. Just your right hand. I'm first a spiritual creature. Later on I'm a rational creature. You go to the masjid, how many rock eyes you make? Two. Why are you making it to Raqqa? Oh Allah, help me to keep the perfect body that you gave me perfect. Help me Allah so that I won't put reefers and wine in here. <clears throat> you ever notice a small child when it's very, very small and you go around it and you just had a fight with another person? You go around that little child that can't even talk? You reach for the child, what will the child do? It'll reject you. It can't speak English, Arabic, or German. But what does it have? It has that original spiritual nature that is first for all human beings. Yeah. And that child can sense when your internal peace is broken. Yeah. Lord, Lord. We lost it. Let me tell you this now. I'm finishing. You want to be successful in life? Start off the way you did with God when he started you. You started off with your excellent spirituality. Spirituality means sensitivity. You know the man that's a mathematician? Hazem Ali. Brother Hazem. He's an accountant. What, was he an accountant first? Or was he a spiritual baby first? He was a spiritual baby first. It was his spirituality that sensitized him to accounting. I'm a doctor. It's my spirituality that sensitized me to medicine. He's in uh, uh, electronics. My, my good brother, man. <laughs> Yeah, got it right. Electronics, electronics. Well, that's okay. You get close to it. What sensitized him? The spirituality. <clears throat> so you're a spiritual preacher <clears throat> that will give you the sensitivity that you need to move in this material world. Allah Allah. So I have to stop, and Allah knows I don't want to stop. It's very difficult. You know. And I tell people like this. Everywhere I go, y'all shouldn't do me like this. <laughs> <laughs> Your faces are demon. We're we going to do better next time. You, no, 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 no. I'm talking about, no, I don't mean it that next time. I mean, your faces are demon. The brothers are so handsome that I want to kiss them. I ain't no homosexual. <laughs> so you know if I talk about him like that, you know what, how I feel about yourself. Okay? And this is the community of Muhammad the Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is Prophet Muhammad's community. Believe it or not. And may Allah give you greater guidance to grow bigger than your problems. Amen. Amen. How much is 2 plus 2? Look. How much is 2 plus 2? The answer was there before I created the problem. You thirsty? Isn't the water there before you realize you're thirsty? 
Is the food there before you realize you're hungry? So you shouldn't be hung up on problems, thank you, brother. We should be looking for answers and not be hung up on the problem. So we thank Allah the Almighty, and I thank you for your man, Qasim Ahmed. And inshallah, we hope to to be with you in the future again. Yes, sir. To share more wisdom yes, sir. and more insight from your man, W.D. Muhammad. Yes, Did I give you a little bit? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can yes, I leave in peace? Yes, sir. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Takbir. Takbir. Yeah, he's it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've been here. Let's let them not go out there. For those thought-provoking words, we're going to end right along with our program. We have Imam Imdi Alam, and he is currently the chairman for the U.S. National Democratic Party for the Asian American Caucus, and he's running for U.S. Senate in the state of Missouri. He's a Bangladeshi American. He comes to give us a brief comment. Thank you so much for being here with us this evening. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. You know, I this position coming after speaking uh, uh, Imam Dr. Nasir Ahmed is very hard. Uh, he was speaking about the spirituality uh, and I learned a lot. Make sure when I come, you come. Yeah. Uh, or let me know where you are. I will go join with you. Uh, let me tell you this. Before I ask her, please give yourself a plug. It's a great gathering. I'd like to give a big hand to Brother Wally Kareem. This brother, you know, we've been holding radio talk show, talking about the community, the Muslim diversity, how we can create a better community. A community that makes sense. Sometimes we talk hour after hour. I'm from Kansas City, Missouri. I know to the brother Wally Green about five years. In this past five years, he proved that he is a really a leader to put even like this together and you all came together. It's really a great opportunity for me to be here. First of all, I'd like to give a little bit about what I knew about Honorable Imam Elijah Muhammad and his son Imam Warren Din Muhammad. I was in Bangladesh. I come from Bangladesh, and also hard to speak after speaking a brother coming from, you know, Philistine. It's very hard to speak in that manner. Uh, in, in Bangladesh, it's a country, uh, you know, next to India. Uh, it's they have 180 million people. And this small, tiny country, it's actually the 10 thousand square feet smaller than size of the state of Missouri and it has 180 million people. A Muslim country, the population wise, that the third greatest nation on earth. But it's a tiny country, a size smaller than Missouri. We learn a lot about Imam Elijah Muhammad. We learn about Imam Qurayddin Muhammad. It's like the international figure. When we talk about Yasir Arafat, he was an Islamic scholar plus an Islamic, you know, regional leader, coming from a land where Arabic being spoken, coming from a land where Muslim by birth, by born. But when we started research. At a young age, I remember myself, it's Papa, it's Kema, about the nation of Islam in America. And that brother was so, so right, and that brother Rami is so right. 
you guys right here with a group of people who brought this Islam at the first place to give a message to the general people. And I was lucky to born with the parents who are Muslim. So we call that, okay, we are by born Muslim. But you know how hard it is to convert? How hard it is to leave your legacy like your parents, your grandparents? Then you move on to some places with the idea and ideology. So I really want to give a big hand to the point when it was needed. Even there are some controversy with just the term nation of Islam. However, it was a big, big event that took place in America to the eye of the outside of America. And that term nation of Islam. I don't want to go inside the deep details what are the agenda that nation of Islam had. But trust me, take my word, that how we came up with toward nation Islam and that was given to the people and the land of America to embrace the masses of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace be upon him. You know, it's a message for all of us. I like what brother was speaking here spiritually. Let me tell you something about something what we can do to put this legacy together in a very hardship manner. That what we are facing. The country has gone to a point that when I walk, I was thinking that you're going to be scared. Oh, this terrorist is walking here, you know. So you're going to be scared, but I'm glad that you did not. Whatever place I've been to, has 15 years since the modern, you know, the theme of that 9-11. Look like I am one of them, I was on that plane. Look like I am one of them, I was just jumping out of the plane and just went to the ground zero. And you too, 7 million peace loving Muslim Americans, 7 million, you know, all of them, they are synonymous with the term terrorist. Tarif. What our Quran says, you kill a life, you kill the humanity. You save a life, you save the humanity. Now don't get me wrong, there were certain events that took place during the time of our Prophet. That was necessary, that was needed, that was the war situation. But the Western media, the propaganda, the fabrication, they lead us nowhere. And they make us like three things will happen to you, me, and every seven million peace loving Muslim Americans. Either you do something good, you will be blamed. You do something bad, sure, you will be blamed. You do nothing, you will be blamed. So what do we need to do? We need to do the good thing and let them blame. That's okay. Because right now, as of 2015, every single year in America, since the last 15 years, about 22,000 people, they're embracing Islam. Because of the propaganda, because of the fabrication, because of the hardship and challenge that thrown to you and the technology is open the window for people to get more. Last night, I just was, you know, get involved with somebody, I don't remember where he's from, finally said Florida. He was putting a text on my phone and I, my number is public. So he texted me. So I had to reply to him and I talk to him 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, he said, I am sorry, I didn't know this is what it is. So the perception, the reality, they are not meeting and they are not saying. Guess what? They are taking both the message from the 48 inch television. I think you might know about Fox News. That's the one, they're the machine. That's what they're taking from. 
you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the message of Allah. Today in America, these people, these people, this honorable Imam, if they didn't put their work and their hardship and their hard work and challenge, I guarantee, maybe today I would not be here either. It took a shaping an international community, a society, a value, a culture, as brother was saying, the diversity. In Islam, starting from Azerbaijan, the alphabet A, and down there the 26th alphabet Y and Z, Yemen, and you take the language, every single country on earth has Muslim. You walk somewhere, you go somewhere, immediately you know somebody is Muslim, you say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Guess what? It doesn't matter. It's a white brother or black brother or somebody my skin or this brother's skin, they will embrace you immediately. Islam is something based on the bond of your faith and love. And the love of our prophet. I didn't see my prophet. This brother didn't see. None of us see. But why we are here together? Through the love of our prophet. And I'm sorry. I've been, you know, uh, targeted so many times. Calling me the, you know, like kind of one of the terrorists who is trying to propagate people and Muslims in the political process. Let me bring to the political process. Surely our Imam, the deed, it was indeed needed for that time. It was definitely a political process. Giving you the idea with the love of Islam and the method of Allah with the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet. That's why it was called Nation of Islam. Let's do some research right now. Let's talk about what really it means the Nation of Islam. Today, we Muslims around the world, it is the Nation of Islam. Al Islam, the Islam, the Islam. It doesn't matter where I come from. It doesn't matter where you come from. We all tied with that same value, the value of love and the value of our prophet. What leave us behind? My brother and sister, this is a huge question. Why? We are here and what we need to do to rectify ourselves and what we need to do to put this legacy together. Now we are saying this is a legacy way on the carryover. You gotta do something, correct? And that is the hard thing to do. Let me tell you this. Let me bring you an ayah from the Quran. Dr. Nasir Ahmed, he already tasked me on it. I give you the more. But as he said, when he was saying the Arabic, yeah, you should. It's not his bragging about. He's proud. And he must be proud about it. When he said, Ikra Bismillah Allah. You should try it. To get it. I don't speak Arabic. I speak whole different language. Even if it's not English. Before I speak English, I speak five other languages. But Arabic is not one of my languages. But I have to go learn while I'm learning other language. So the verse from Quran, and that verse tells you, Inna Allah la yugayyuru ma bi qawmi Hatta yugayyuru ma bi anfusin Wa iza aradallahu bi qawmin suha Fala maraddalahu wa ma lahum min dunihi bi wa this ayah will rectify our community. Right now in Muslim community, so much conflict, inner conflict. Should we be involved in the political process? Should we be doing something that will give us the status within the government? 
Look at your basic, what Quran says, the ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, I do not change, I do not do, until you change your status. You have to change the status. My brother and sister, in other words, in the Quran, it tells if a leader, when he engages himself with wrongdoing, wrong activities, what's our role? Allah says in the Quran that you need to be steadfast with the state. You do not withdraw yourself from the state. But your leader, if he hates you, you hate what he is doing, but do not hate him. So these three masses, these three masses, you do not hate those, but hate what they are doing. And don't withdraw yourself from the state. Brother and sister, put these two eyes together. This is clear. Our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa he was the one to put the Medina church the first turban in the mankind. So that tells right there, it is us, our obligation to do for our nation. The country, we are the ones who bring peace, harmony, justice. We should be setting a standard as the example of the walking and talking Quran. You are the one who should pass the message and information. Don't blame, he's right, it's ignorance. Terrorism is ignorant. That's what people are saying. That's what they refer to. I have two and thir two minutes thirty seconds. Uh, the clear message I'm gonna bring here, real quick. When you know who is our main enemy? The devil, the shaitan, the iblis. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he created human being, Allah said, Oh Adam. Learn this, as Allah was speaking the name. Then Allah brought all the angels. Allah said, oh angels, tell me the name. The angel says, we don't know, Allah, you know. Then Allah asked, the first order of human being was Adam. Yeah, Adam, tell me the name. So Adam said, yeah, Allah, this, this, this means because Allah gave him the name. The second thing Allah said, do whatever you do, be happy. Eat whatever you do. But don't go to that tree. Guess what? That was the second order to give him. Meanwhile, when Adam was able to tell the name, Allah said, O oh, angel, bow down and prostrate the earth. Everybody did except one. And he was the leader of Adam. His name was Iblis. He's so real. He's so real. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Sure. He was a disbeliever. And, oh Adam, you have done wrong. So I'm going to kick you. I'm going to kick you out of this paradise, from the Jannah. You know, you're going to go and go Adam said one thing. I'm going to be, I have maybe another one minute, ten seconds. Adam said one thing. Ya yeah, Allah, this Iblis, this Shaitan, this devil, I already fallen short. Please don't send him with me in this dunya. Please don't send him. Allah said, don't worry. I will give you a tablet. I will give you a sacred book. I will give you something that it will lead you back to Jannah. My brother and sister, you know, I wish we have Anna and I have a radio talk show. Brother Ali Karim has the number. You guys have some great information. Come join. Let's talk. And the last passage. Ten seconds. <laughs> when I ran for state, Secretary of State in Missouri, the very next day I was in the Fox News and everything. Oh, there's a terrorist running for office in Missouri. You're not going to get any vote. Alhamdulillah, we don't have that many big Muslim communities. I was able to come up with over 40,000 votes. And that tells right there, 
that 40 inch TV really doesn't matter. You need to reach to the people with the wisdom and love and the compassion that you are the one who want to establish the peace, harmony and justice. That what our great Imam they did in the early Islamic history in America, Imam W. Dean Muhammad, Walid Dean Muhammad. Imam Walid Dean Muhammad right now, he is working hard. We have Imam Elijah Muhammad. These are the pioneers of Islam in America. And there are a few names I have to bring. Malcolm X, one of, one of them was there with the group. There is Muhammad Ali with the group. And of course, it's still the controversy with, you know, we have that uh, Mr. Uh, you know, uh, Louis Farrakhan. But the name in general, when I look from outside, it's great that they're still carrying a name. So they, are, they should be also holding the responsibility to the betterment of the name of that Islam, the nation of Islam. No. I don't mean the nation of Islam that run by Louis Farrakhan. I'm talking about the nation of Islam as the Ummah should be united and ignite with the, with the power of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I really enjoyed it, but I like to see that next time you guys invite me, I will come and don't put me after this brother. Please. Thank you so, so much.
and, ma and maintenance of the Racine Islamic Center where he lived. The doors would not be open if it was not for his commitment and his steadfastness. Brother Kadeem Takur exemplifies a believer who does his duty and make no excuses. He, des he described himself as being a man, of, a man for justice and a witness for God. The Progressive Leadership Legacy Association wish to present Brother Sakur the Lifetime Service Award for his unselfish dedication in helping to build a model community. We pray our Lord's blessings be with him and his family. Amen. Will the photographer come up? This is one of my grandsons right here. He's a, he's a colleague. He's probably going to stop the band. Next, we'd like to uh, have our second awardee. It's a young lady who I've been knowing for all my life. She's a relative of mine, by the way, and she was in the community of Islam since she was born over 80 years ago. Her name is Ms. Viv Vivian Barnes Aziz. Chicago, at the age of about 10, 12 years old, my sister and I. Uh, we lived in a building with all Muslims. We were only Christians living in that building on the third floor at 423 East 45th Place in Chicago, Illinois. Her mother was one, and her father were the two of the pioneers here in Chicago when Dr. Elijah Muhammad came from Detroit, Michigan, and it brought, brought the Nation of Islam teachers here to Chicago. Uh, I would like to read her bio. With the name of Allah, the mercy of benefactor, the mercy of redeemer. Vivian Barnes, Aziz, born April 5th, 1935, from the union of Brother Henry X and Sister Ideal X Hopper. Vivian was their only child. Her parents accepted Islam in the early 30s after visiting the Temple of Islam here in Chicago and the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. They were some of the first converts in Chicago, while all the brothers were sent to prison for, for, for refusing to uh, accept the military draft at that time. They joined the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who were sent earlier. Well, these brothers were sent, many of them were over age, but they were sent to try to curtail or stop the progress of the nation of Islam at that time. But he was very, very, uh, uh, actually, what you might call, they were very strong in their belief system. And they followed the Honorable Elijah Muhammad all the way to prison. And they didn't mind dying if it was necessary to carry out the program that he had been given. Vivian's mother and all the MGT and GCC, everybody know what that, those terms? Oh, yeah. Muslim Girls Training and General Civilization Class. Muslim Girls Training and General Civilization Class. Uh, they called the uh, school at that time the University of Islam. Right. And guess what the University of Islam first was, first one I met, I knew, was in her mother's basement at 423 is 45th place. At that site, Imam Warrington Muhammad, one of the students, as well as Brother Imam Don Al Kareem, and many, many others. She can tell you more about it than I can. And uh, it grew from there to what is known now as Sister Clara Muhammad School, as we have many representative schools all over the, all over the country. Allah, Allah. 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 
All of you remember Sheikh James Shabazz? Right. Yeah. But Sheikh James Shabazz and Brother, e Brother Emmanuel's eldest brother, Brother Emmanuel, was two of their first teachers in, this, in the uh, Nation of Islam, University of Islam School. Mm -hmm. uh, Vivian finished 1951. In uh, June 6, 1953, she and Brother Clarence X. Barnes, Aziz, was who was one of the FOI secretaries and managers of Shabazz Grocery Grocery Store. They were married, and from their union, born seven children and nine grandchildren, two great grandchildren, and one great great. Vivian is a strong believer, still active in Al Islam, and dedicated to her family and community. The Progressive Leadership Legacy Association wish to give Sister Vivian Barnes Aziz the Lifetime Service Award for her many years of service and dedication and pray our last choice and blessings be with her and her family. Amen. Allahu Akbar. Vivian, I love to continue to bless you with many more years. And she'll look a day old, 35. <laughs> I said something last year. How do you all feel? I feel good like a believer should. I said something different last year. But I want to thank all of you all for coming out. We love you all. I want to thank uh, Valerie Harmon from the uh, Archdiocese. I want to thank our, uh, our other family from the Nation of Islam, which they all have left. At this particular time, I want to thank my brother Naeem. Where is he at? Naeem? I want to thank him for all that he has done, you know, for us, which he always does. And I hope I'm not leaving. I'm here to you know, I want to thank um, I, I thank everybody that helped us. <laughs> and I thank my my, my, my my dear brother here. You know, we go long, 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 long way back. I thank you all very much. I thank Todd and Magnet. We go a long way back. But uh, I hope I'm not leaving out anybody. I got it. I got it.